digital video project is an attempt by us to address some of the problems that we've seen with the educational system in uh, past years. Students often learn things without understanding how they relate to other subjects, how they relate to anything else they learn at school. They don't see the connection between those subjects and anything in the real world. And because of that, they forget so much of what they learn in the classroom. We're trying to come up with a way of teaching that helps students to see that all the subjects they learn at school are related and that they can take those subjects and what they learn and apply them to some real world situation that they might actually use later in life. It also, by giving students a project-based approach, <laughs> keeps them focused. It helps them to uh, be directed towards a, a finished product that they're gonna turn out at the end of the year that they can be proud of, they can see the results of all of their hard work, and it brings the school and the community together in a sense that everyone in the, in the program here at OPA is working together to accomplish this one great goal of turning out a motion picture we can be proud of. The reason we selected a movie for this project, I mean really there's a lot of different projects you could use, the reason we selected a movie is uh, primarily because it's something we knew that we could easily integrate a lot of different uh, subjects, a vast array of subjects into the project without difficulty. The students will be involved in the writing process, in the research process, in the photographing of the movie, and all these different, uh, the creating of the soundtrack, the music, all of these different things are a naturally part of the movie making process. some money and you wanted, you got tired of living in the city, you'd go out and you'd buy your rifle and some food, some hot powder, lead, some cloth for making char cloth and patches, a bunch of traps, you needed some uh, uh, beaver musk scent to attract the beavers to the traps, and a canoe so you could go out in the woods, risk your life for a year, work real hard, trap all these beaver pelts, and then take them back, all the way back to St. Louis, without getting robbed by the Indians or pirates, or some other bad guy along the way, falling down, breaking your leg, dying out in the woods. It was really easy to die out there. All the way back to St. Louis, so you could sell your traps, or your, your beaver pelts, to get enough food and money and powder and lead to go back and do it all over again. The, the tomahawk now, what we call the hawk, this was used for many purposes. You know, they may have a bone and uh, they're doing a bear or something, and they, they had something to chop it with. Because this big knife I showed you, they never would have carried this big knife. They carried it, it looked just like a butcher knife, just like your butcher knife at home. They didn't use any fancy looking, you know, tools, but they did use this a lot of time to break bone, uh, if you wanted to pause off it for some purpose. It, it come in handy for that. Very little did he ever use it in defense against a, a human being. You know, he had his rifle, he had his knife, you know. Uh, when that was out, and he'd throw his knife and everything was down to the last thing, he probably would use the hawk. They used it a lot, mainly for games purposes. Then they said, well, what if we bring all of the stuff that you need out to the plains, and we'll meet you up 
out where you are. So they loaded up big wagon trains full of beads and uh, knives and tomahawks and all of the stuff that's easily made in the cities and brought it out there. The word spread around throughout all the mountain men. And in the middle of the summertime, everybody came down and traded their beaver pelts right there. It was a much more efficient operation. But that's where rendezvous came. They'd get together at what you call rendezvous. Uh, they'd come from all over, all these mountain men, and they'd plan it. We're going to gather here on July the 1st, and we're going to have a rendezvous. We're all going to get together. They'd get themselves a barrel of whiskey, you know, and they'd get all their tomahawks out and knives and start throwing stuff. It was a contest. Blade, but didn't stick. Oh, oh nice. one. That's, that's really nice. You got a natural hair. That's it. I'll do it again. All right. Oh Good job. God. Back in those days, I would have loved it. I mean, oh, right in line. Good shots. Good shot. Nice. Real nice. Oh, three out of three. So, first is spending. Now detention. Look at you. You're even starting to dress differently. Who are these kids? They're just some kids. Samantha says your friends pick on her and make fun of her. Is that true? I don't pick on her. I can't control if other, what other people do. Sam's the one who got those kids in trouble. They weren't doing anything. That's not true. They put me in the locker. trying out for Mace because I think there should be a girl bully and if I don't get to do that I just want to be a detention student. My name is Nick Stuber and I'm trying out for the part of Adam Reese because I got a little note a few probably about a week ago actually that was inviting me to try out for the part and also I kind of want to be in a movie and I think I might have a little bit of a chance of being Adam so I decided I'd be him. I'm gonna love this, Adam. I've de decided what to do with that little brat. Why are they letting deaf kids into the school room? She can't hear what the teacher's saying. Huh? Hello, my name is Connie Stites, and I'm trying out for the white woman, um, age 40, who I thought maybe I'd be good for that part because I am a white woman and I wish I was 40. Uh, narrow minded, <laughs> judgmental. Me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam Stites. I'm trying out for Adam, Leroy, Mace, and Jed. And so one of the reasons I'm trying out for him is I kind of feel that I can relate to some of these characters, and you know, so I think I'll do a good job. You should not have come back for me. We go to preserve our past, but you are the future of our people. A person who will not care for their family is worse than a wild animal. What I want to say to you. My name? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jamie Reef. I'm trying out for the part of Latana because Tim gave me an invitation to try out for it. 
And that's why I got it. And also because I think it'll be really fun. Hey, I want to try. Yeah, but what if he steps on the cardboard and breaks it and there's like white stuff on the set? Like, because if he breaks the cardboard while he steps on it? Cardboard isn't for the set. It's just to cover the ground while we we're gonna do put drywall mud on this later oh, yeah. on. Okay. And if it gets on the plastic, it gets really slick. Oh. It gets soak in. So you put cardboard or something down, and then it. Pickle. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Does it work better if you do it with your hands? Huh? Um, not especially. Ew. Ew. It depends what you're after. But. But what about the rocks? Just put it like over huh? the rocks too? No, just to yeah, blend the edges. You don't have to oh, put okay. it all over the rocks, just around the like, like Okay. That? Like yeah. Yeah. I'm working on it. Ew, there's dirt in it. It's <laughs> <laughs> not. Move it, Sonia. It's a cave. Yeah, it's all. Oh, you're gonna get it. Look. Oh, yeah, I know. Come over here. here. Is that handy? Hmm? You take your hands and just pull. Oh, fun. Fun, fun, fun. I got that. Yeah, oh. there you go. Wow, look at that. Jeepers. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Spray paint. Wow. Yeah. All right, I'm poisonous. Very oh, good. Yeah. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> That looks like a cave. Almost. I'm oh. yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm just doing his makeup. We're sitting too. in the green room. Hey, Tim, are you sitting in the green room? room. And uh, she's doing my makeup. Makeup sucks. <laughs> it does very much so. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff though, so you don't look like a gross on camera. Like a gross? Like a gross. <laughs> See, we have yes. some fun. Yeah. I hate that one. There's line. no sign for so much. Are they seen? Remember when you were all standing here and, and he was shooting the ball on Tuesday? Okay, we're going to be back in those spots. Well, we need to get the car. I'm not responding to you. Bye. Well, archery is a thing that I don't think comes naturally. I think you have to spend a lot of time on it. See, right now, I haven't strung a bow for so long that I can't even remember how to string this thing. But I used to be pretty good at archery. I'm not as good anymore, but in the movie, I'm perfect. Ben, how do you feel about getting makeup? Powder me. Okay, what we want to do is we want to lighten his face, it's make it pale, me. and then just maybe a little bit of blood coming out of his nose. It was just all over the face. The blood is going to be coming out like of his nose. Size. Oh, he's going to have a splash like right here on her eye. Um, And action.
this. How is it being a gaffer? Oh, it's wonderful. This sounds like you know, we don't get very much publicity or nothing. We're not, <coughs> don't get too good. Pay's not that great, but you know, it's a job for a real hero. <laughs> You turn that way. Look over towards the entrance. Then I go to my trailer, and my clothes are all scattered out, and somebody's been eating my food. And I asked for blue M&Ms only, and they put brown ones in there. The nerve. I know. <laughs> like, you know, maybe something about. She cares, but her. She says sorry or something. I think it would be a good. I'm sorry about Justin or something like that. And <clears throat> Adam can kind of put his arm around her and as they're walking and then they kind of mm, they kind of look down at each other and then he scoops her up and kind of, you know, wings her around playfully and yeah. and maybe like pushes her on the ground or something and then takes off running and she runs off laughing. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's do one like that. Okay. All right. Good job. I didn't do what, but that's okay. No. Yep. All right. And print. And break for lunch. Lunch break. Um, we're going to wonder what. So uh, how do you feel about the uh, documentary footage taken so far on the project here? It's dog up dope. Pretty word. I got the 10-4 on this, and it was pretty, it was pretty up. I was down with it. Sorry. Roll camera. Rolling. Mark it. Scene 12, one, take two. Action. You left her in the dark, and then you left her alone. But you left her alone. You know better than that, Adam. Yeah, it's just wrestling in new places. Okay, quiet. Yes, <laughs> I think you need the belt. All right, roll the camera. Roll it. Mark it. Scene 65, one, take one. Action. Ready for a little adventure this afternoon? You know, the first thing's gonna happen is this sword's gonna go flip around between my legs and uh -huh. hurt me. Boom! Yep. And I'm gonna go head first into a tree. Hence the beanie. You'll come right like around from this big rock over here. Okay. So you're kind of looking down at her. Pudrido, <laughs> idejo! <laughs> figure that out. Stay. And my parents changed their phone number so I couldn't call them. <laughs> so, uh, is, that, that great? is that why they changed <laughs> it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so, um, I forgot my notes at home because I wrote all the Spanish notes on the side. But, I mean, I can, I can do that part. But me gusta. That, okay, I like it. Give it to me and you can go. I can do that part. But just instead of it might be worth something. I, like I said, I don't know how to, I couldn't figure out how to phrase that, right? Mm -hmm. So, it might be valuable. 
that I just that's the that's the word I couldn't figure out. Okay. I was like, okay. Uh, I was thinking just start here, Sorry. and then she could walk up into it, you know. All right, be loud on this one, because since we're quite a ways away with the mic. All right. Okay, roll camera. Rolling. You're seeing fifty-four eight. Take one. Action. Dragon cambio. Tu collar por tu vida. That was wrong. I believe it. That wrong. Yeah? yeah? I like the dog good. part. Yes. <laughs> oh, you were I quit. To I'm going. Back to the ship. Actually, if, we, if, he, if he could look up and, like, I don't know, look at Lee for something. Look at Lee? Call him Demonio. Uh, he'll need to look I over here. All oh, the time. This side <laughs> of the camera. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, look. <laughs> Action. Demonio. Nice. That was beautiful. Yeah, I was really thinking about that too, actually. <laughs> now I got my other security. <laughs> Drop off about uh, six or eight feet. Do about right there. Over there where Kim is, you know, I could walk right down that. So I'm thinking if we just, you know, have the camera we keep pretty wide <laughs> shot this way. And Elena, you'll be up at the top. Okay. And then if just ready to glow. On action of Tony is just like standing here, and just kinda of goes on his back and slides down the hill. Get her and go in there. See if I can see you at all, because there's a bump in the hill and I, I didn't like what you're looking at. Because kind of she's kind of right there, Corey. Enjoying that piece of cold basalt on my butt. <laughs> I think there'd but be more scratchy from there. Actually see it over Adam's shoulder for the shot when we switch between yeah, yeah, his mom's and yeah. So what do we have? Well, we got to make more seeds. That's good. We need some explosions. Fireworks. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Do we need the door closing? 18 years ago when we got married. Yeah, you haven't been, been there back. since. No, I haven't been there since. There was some meaning behind the visual, maybe. $6,000 for a whole family to go rent it. Season 1-5 from the mid-shot. Roll camera. Mark it. Scene 24-1, take 2. Action. That seemed like yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> kind of pulling like, whoa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rolling exactly. good. Take him. Is it locked? Not yet. Hey, Corey. Actually, there's a chance I might yell that. Okay. And you're ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Call roll camera. Okay, quiet on the set. Roll camera. Lee. Mark it. Thirty-eight, two, take one. Action. 
Okay? All right. Nice, nice job. Good job. All right. That's perfect. <laughs> so how did you enjoy working with Jamie? I can't talk, so I always do thumbs up or thumbs down. So why can't you talk? <laughs> so are you deaf in the movie, or you, have you always been deaf? I've always been deaf. Mm. So how do you, do you enjoy working with Axel as a director? He's a good director. He's right there, though, so I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> <laughs> what was the hardest thing that uh, about your character that you had to bring to the screen? Not talking, being deaf, learning sign language. What do you think of the movie? How do you think it's coming in? How do you think it'll turn out? I think it's going to turn out pretty good. Are you anxious to go and see it? Huh? Are you anxious to go and see it? <laughs> yeah. And after dark, we'll do this cowboy camp thing. Which okay. is... Is that you it? say thank you. I, yeah. I think I can handle that one. <laughs> and then in a few scenes later, you wake up. <laughs> you see your eye. Cool. It's going to show and our eyes. <laughs> Then we'll get these last, the part after you go up from the beach. Oh, to go up to Lackman to get killed. Right. Got it. We'll get the shots of you and the shots of him. Up there. You are, are you? Yep. Oh. Ah! Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about the thing. You know how to control the microphone? I've just been using that microphone. It works just as good, but it doesn't work just as good, but it works. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering if it works just as good when you have the other one. Oh, ah, that got hurt. Yeah, how in the heck you do that? Action. 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 I'll be back for you. So, have you tested that pole? It has been tested. Yeah. And it works successfully? What we're working on now is the uh, rake shot where we've got a rake tied to some fishing line. It's gonna, yeah. And then the rake's gonna fall, and as it starts falling, we've got this fishing line which goes through a little loop there and then over here. On the off chance that something happens and that rake starts to actually fall towards the mess up. So you can try and stop it there. Action! Okay, cut. <laughs> you ready, right, Vanessa? So what really happens is the rake falls yeah. and I shoot it with the bow and arrow. Okay. Yeah, that's how you really okay. did it, right? Oh, okay. it's a little bit far ahead. <laughs> Action. Good kick, Vanessa. Good. Nice job on that. Oh okay. crap. That was an accident. Basically all you have to have someone do is don't worry about the string. Have her walk on here and have someone here or right outside the window, you know, somewhere. And basically just have, have this, you know, ready to fall. And just okay. take little steps, okay? Yep. Go real slow, Vanessa. Ready? Because we don't want to get very close to those pointy things. We are ready. Quiet on the set. Roll camera. Rolling. Action. Axel locked up the whole crew for the legend. Today was the off, most optimum lighting. We used the lowest desktop from F86 to use the shadow speed. And we lit it accordingly. And action!
Marsha Moratti of the Jefferson County Historical Society Museum. And uh, we're in the basement, I guess, of the museum building, right. the City Hall building, in Port Townsend, Washington. And uh, this is our jail set. And the jail, when was it built? 1892. The whole building was built as uh, a jail, courtroom, fire hall, city offices, the mayor, and such. Uh, uh, council chambers upstairs. Uh -huh. Council chambers are still used by the city. Is that right? Yeah. And um, is, what's changed down here since the original? Not much. Um, at, uh, plumbing and wiring have been like jury rig mm -hmm. um, yeah. in here, afterthoughts. And uh, there was also um, a, what was a quarantine, I can't remember. Um, other, the, the city, Police actually had their offices down here. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, and that was the entrance. Oh, the awesome. Street. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. Well, we sure appreciate you uh, letting us use it. Sure. Yeah, can't yeah. wait to uh, see how the footage came out. It'll be, it'll be fun to see. All right, thank you, Mark. So those, those things. I know it was them engines. That watch was my husband's pride and joy, and he took real good care of it. Why, he hardly let it out of his sight. Some engine came along and stole it from our chest. Don't worry, ma'am. I keep the engines here well under control. If there's a thief among them, <laughs> I will find you. Cut. Oh. Action. Taking things they put. separately, then we take those two clips and load them into the computer. Here we've got the shot of Steve Muller as Leroy reacting to the arrow which hits beside him. As you can see the arrow is not there yet. So then we take the shot of the arrow which hits the wall right in here and we want to basically slice those down the middle so that we have uh, both halves going simultaneously. So we'll take those two clips and load them into Adobe After Effects. And then what we need to do is find the, the exact spot. Here on the top we've got the clip of the arrow. We want to find the exact spot where the arrow hits. Which is let's go frame by frame. There's the frame where it hits, so we'll mark that frame on that clip. Then we hide that layer. We'll go to the layer of Steve and find the spot where he reacts, which is right in here, in the beginning of that, and we'll mark that layer there. So then we just take the layers, line up those two marks, so then his reaction and the arrow hitting are at the same time. Now we turn the top layer back on of the arrow, and we want to hide this half so that we can see Steve, so we can create a mask Then we can take that and drag that mask. 
mask over to show the rest of the frame from the layer underneath. Now we want to make sure this line is as straight as possible to follow the edge of that window trim to hide it. So what we'll do is remove this control point in the middle. That way we'll just keep a good straight line. Line it up a little bit more with the edge of the window there. And then, as you scroll, scroll through, you've got the arrow hitting and Steve reacting, just like it was hitting right beside it. So then after you've got that, you can export that final footage, send it down the pipeline into Avid, where it will be composited into the final movie.